Hello. In this segment, I'd like to do a quick introduction to radicals, some very basic, basic information. Estimating radicals, what's the names of the portions of the, 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 uh, the value that's under the radical, etc. So, let's take a look. Um, when we ask you to find the square root of a number, we're asking for what number times itself gives you that value, for example. So, the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times itself gives you 4. But it is also a negative 2, because a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. Sometimes we write that, I'm going to go ahead and put that over here, as plus or minus 2. So, the square root of 25, we might write as plus or minus 5, etc. The square root of 100, a positive 100, and a negative 100. doesn't really matter how you write it. 144, 12, and a negative 12. Those are the square roots of these values. It's a little confusing sometimes when then we go and change the directions and we say to you, uh, we ask you to simplify something that is under a square root symbol. So, for example, if I ask you to simplify the square root of 36, what I'm asking, so the directions here say, you know, give me the value of this. I am looking for what's called the principal square root of 36, which is the positive version. So, when I ask you these days to simplify this expression, I am just looking for a positive 6. So this is stating right here, give me the principal square root. So the principal square root of uh, 64 is 8. However, if I ask you to simplify this expression right here, this is asking you to tell me, uh, to give me the opposite of whatever the principal square root of 9 is. Well, that's 3. And the opposite of 3 is a negative 3. So be very careful with the two directions that I just have explained here. This one says simplify these expressions and the previous one said give me the square roots, plural, plus and minus, um, for each of those values. Um, the next thing that you'll be asked to do in the introductory section um, where you review radicals is to just use your calculator and to approximate the square root. Um, I'm not going to put a calculator up on the screen, but if you have a Texas Instrument graphing calculator, you'd use the second key, and I've got mine right here. I don't think I could, I could do this well enough. Um, in the first column, uh, about the sixth button down, or maybe you'd call it the fifth button down, above the x squared key is the square root key. So you'd go second square root and type in the value that you're looking to get the square root for. When I type this into my graphing calculator, I get and I, I had to cut it off somewhere, so I, I wrote that down. Be careful and watch your directions. Typically, we'll ask you to round to the hundredths place, or maybe the tenths place. If we ask you to round to the hundredths place, then look at that digit and see that it is 5 or greater. So round that number up and call it 2.83. Or if they're asking you to round to the tenths place, if they're asking you to round to here, look at the 2. It is not a 5 or greater, so to the tenths place we'd have 2.8. So all I ask of you is that when you take the square root of something, just look at the directions and see how they ask you to round. The next thing that you might be asked to do in an introduction to this topic is to identify the radicand. And all the radicand is, in this example, is the expression that's under the radical. So in this particular case, the radicand is 16z. That's all. I'm just looking for the expression under the radical. It's called the radicand. We're going to deal with just, just with square roots. And so typically, right here, if you weren't dealing with square roots, you might have a cube root. You might have a 3 here or a 4. That's called the index. With square roots, we don't put that 2 there. It's understood. It's the most popularly used um, root, if you will, in our everyday lives. The next thing that I would ask you is, are these values real or not? So, for example, 
If I asked you what's the square root of 16, or the principal square root of 16, you would give me 4. Because 4 times itself gives you 16. If I were to go and put a negative number under the radical and ask you to take the square root, you need to tell me no. This is not a real number. So I'm just going to put over here no. There is no value that I can multiply times itself and get a negative number, a negative 16. I can't take a negative times a negative and get a negative. So there is no real answer for that problem. Do be careful. Just notice the difference between this and this one. Here I'm just asking for the opposite of the principal square root of 16. So I'm asking for the opposite of 4 or negative 4. Finally, um, let's simplify some algebraic expressions. The radicand under the radical. So I'm just going to put up here in terms of directions. Simplify. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to try to briefly write here assume no radicands Uh, representing square of negative numbers. I don't think I'm going to get into that issue, but essentially it's, it gets at the fact that um, if you use negative numbers for the variable in the expression, for example, the square root of x squared, if you use negative numbers, your answer would have to be put in the absolute value brackets. We're going to assume no negative numbers are being used. So the square root of x squared is equal to just x because x times itself is equal to x squared. And we're done. We've simplified this expression. Let's simplify uh, 7pq, that quantity squared, all under the radical. Be careful, that's all under the radical. And so my results for this would be 7pq because 7pq times 7pq is 7pq, that quantity squared. So I've taken the square roots of these. Um, let's go ahead and look at the square root of y minus 4, that quantity squared. So I hope you're seeing that the square root of something squared is the something. So the square root of something squared is just that something because y minus 4 times y minus 4 is y minus 4 squared. Again, you're looking for what times itself gives you the radicand or what's under the radical. Finally, one last problem. Similar, similar topic. You may be asked to simplify an expression like this. An algebraic expression, a trinomial for the radicand. And this cannot be simplified unless you factor it. Because we have to turn it into uh, a binomial squared in order to be able to take the square root of it. I cannot just say, oh look, there's a 4a squared here. I can call the square root of that 2a. Or, oh look, there's a 25. I can call the square root of that 5. These are three terms under the radical. They are not a bunch of factors. So what I have to do, this happens to be a perfect square trinomial. I'm not going to go through the... the um, AC method of factoring this. I'm just going to say to you that I recognize that 2a times 2a is 4a squared. And in the back here, 5 times 5 is this 25. But I want their middle terms to combine to be a minus 20a, so I better make those both be negatives. Because this negative 10a and that negative 10a will combine to be that minus 20a. So essentially, this expression is the square root of 2a minus 5 that quantity squared, lo and behold. And so the results for that, when I simplify that, is just 2a minus 5. This is just an introduction to radicals. We're going to go ahead and look at simplifying them some more, multiplying and dividing, and adding and subtracting. And finally, we're going to conclude with solving radical equations.